There are many millions of things on this earth we can observe, but there are many more so small that they are invisible to the unaided eye. There is a key to this mini world, the microscope. It helps us in three ways. It produces magnification, making things appear to be larger, as shown by this magnifying glass, the simplest form of a microscope. Then there is resolution. We can see individual markings of fine detail, which the unaided eye cannot distinguish. See, Mr. Lincoln? Contrast sets off tiny details from their immediate surroundings, such as these cell walls. A microscope has the combination of lenses which produce this magnification, resolution, and contrast. The single objective microscope has one power of magnification. The double objective microscope provides for two degrees of magnification. This microscope produces different degrees of magnification through a zoom effect, a technique used frequently by the motion picture cameraman. The optical microscope can enlarge many hundreds of times. The electron microscope can magnify many thousand times by sending a stream of electrons through the sample. The atom smasher may be the ultimate microscope. It gives us information about the nucleus of an atom. So far, nobody has seen an atom, let alone its nucleus. But parts of the smashed atomic nucleus can leave traces, for example, on the emulsion of a photoplate, which can be identified by the atomic scientist. The optical microscope is used in many fields, in the doctor's office, in industry, by the police in the investigation of crime. By scientists in many areas, especially in biology. The compound microscope is probably the most commonly used instrument. It enables the operator to achieve a low and high degree of magnification. The magnification is produced by lens systems. The eyepiece or ocular, it's the upper lens. Instruments with one eyepiece are called monocular microscopes. Those with two eyepieces are often referred to as binocular microscopes. The latter shows the image in real position, important for some industrial assemblies. The monocular microscope, on the other hand, reverses and inverts the image. This nose piece, or turret, rotates to click one of the two lens systems into viewing position. Some turrets have three positions. The third is neutral. These lenses are called object lenses, or shorter, objectives. The magnification is achieved by the power of the objective and the power of the eyepiece. Numbers indicate their magnification powers. This eyepiece is marked 10 and the objective is marked 11. The total magnification is determined by multiplying the number of the eyepiece with the number of the objective in position. In this case, it is 110. The specimens to be examined will be placed on this table, or stage. It has a window in the center. A diaphragm will control the amount of light passing through this window. There are instruments equipped with an iris to control the light intensity. 
low power magnification requires less light than high power magnification. The light enters from below. It is reflected by this mirror. Daylight or light from an artificial source can be utilized. Warning, never reflect direct sunlight. It may damage your eyes. Some microscopes have their own built-in light source. Samples to be examined must be transparent or translucent. The light from the source, reflected by the mirror, must shine through the specimen that is placed on a glass slide. The focusing is achieved by two focus knobs which move the lens system up and down in the body tube. There is a coarse focus, usually the larger knob, and a fine focus, usually the smaller knob. Other microscopes have static lens systems. In this case, the stage is moving up and down to focus on an opaque sample. Now that we are familiar with the most important parts of a microscope, let's use it. But first, we need a sample. The hair sample will be put on a clean glass slide. Dirt magnified hundreds of times may look impressive, but uh, it isn't part of this experiment. The following 12 steps should be kept in mind when using a microscope. One, carry the microscope with both hands. One hand supports the base, the other hand holds the arm. Two, clean the lenses of the eyepiece and the objectives. Use only soft lens paper, the sort of paper used for cleaning eyeglasses. Three, put the turret into neutral. Neither the low or high power objectives are in viewing position. Four, raise the lens systems all the way. Five, rotate the turret and put the low power objective into place. There will be a click when it reaches position. Six, move the light source into position and adjust the mirror to direct the light beam through the window. Check by looking through the microscope. The illuminated disc is called the field. Seven, Put the sample on the stage. Arrest it with the clamps. Make sure the part you want to see is over the window. Eight, lower the lens by using the course knob. Stop when the objective reaches a position about a millimeter above the slide. Nine, focus mainly by raising the lens with the course knob. There is a reason. These lenses are very soft. They can be damaged if they are lowered and pressed against the slide. The student course focuses the hair. The image comes into view. 10. Fine tuning will produce a sharp focus. It is possible to lose the focus in the process of fine tuning. Best thing is to go back to course focusing. It's uh, easier to get into range. 11. Adjust the diaphragm to obtain the best amount of light for this lens and this sample. By moving the slide over the window, different sections of the sample can be viewed. 12. The student puts the high power lens into position. Most modern microscopes are par focal. If one of the lenses is in focus, so is the other. The high power lens is closer to the sample than the low power objective. Same hair under high magnification. The light intensity now is weaker. Opening the diaphragm improves the image. The micron is a measurement for microscopic dimensions. 
1,000 microns equal one millimeter. Scientists use special methods to measure microscopic substances, but this student improvises. She puts a transparent ruler over the slide to measure the width of the hair. The two millimeter bars are coming into focus. The hair is in the center. The microscope focus is so sensitive it can wander up and down different levels. Now the hair is in focus. A rough estimate shows that the hair occupies approximately 1 20th of the millimeter area. Consequently, the width of the hair is about 50 microns. Every experiment begins with the preparation of the sample. This student will look at the cell structure of an onion. A drop of clean water is put on the slide. It will help keep the sample in place. The thin layer of transparent onion epidermis is put on the slide. A cover slip is put over the sample. It will flatten out the thin layer of onion and prevent evaporation of the water. The low magnification of the sample clearly shows the cell structure. There is a way of improving the image of transparent objects, such as it is called staining. Cells are treated with dyes that are selected for certain sample components. A drop of acetoorcine is applied to the onion epidermis. Looks more interesting now, doesn't it? The nuclei in the center of the cells become visible. A larger magnification of the stained onion epidermis. Now the cell nuclei are clearly visible. This is water from a pond. It contains millions of living things and other substances not visible to the unaided eye. The little drop of water squeezed between the slide and cover slip is the universe for these incredibly small plants and animals. Charts make it possible to identify some of the inhabitants of this drop of water. It is the microscope that is your passport to this mini world and countless other places your imagination invites you to visit.